Hello everyone and welcome back to the Havana tournament of 1965, that is the fourth Capablanca a memorial tournament. It is uh, Heinz Gerhard Lehmann uh, versus Robert James Fischer and this is a game from round one. In the previous video uh, I've shown uh, the game Bobby Fischer played against Vasily Smyslov. If you haven't seen that, first link in the description below, please do check out that game before you check out this one as I am going to cover a few games from this tournament and the, the, that one really was a uh, an absolute positional masterpiece by Fisher. Uh, so do watch that. Now, getting back to this one from round one, uh, he uh, Fisher is facing a much more experienced player. He is twice Fisher's age, uh, 44 at the time uh, this was played. The uh, German grandmaster, uh, German master at the time, Hans Lehmann. Uh, later, uh, he got his title uh, of honorary grandmaster, one of the few people who ever accomplished that. And he was uh, also uh, in 1956, he was the West Berlin uh, chess champion. So, uh, you know, not someone to be trifled with with and uh, they play a very interesting line uh, Fisher has a win at some point but he drops it and then anything can happen and it's a really crazy position you guys will have a very fun uh, post the video moment so let's check it out uh, Heinz has the white pieces and he opens with e4 uh, Fisher goes for the Sicilian defense pawn to c5 knight f3 d6 and now d4 so pretty standard stuff open Sicilian knight to f6 knight to c3 and pawn to a6 charging Bobby to a knight of Sicilian uh, really, uh, in 1965, it doesn't get any better than this. Uh, we have bishop to e2, knight b to d7, and now castles. Fischer plays uh, pawn to e6, transposing into the Sabininga variation, and pawn to f4. We have pawn to b5, all pretty much standard moves uh, played even today. Bishop to f3, preparing e5 to put pressure on the rook, and of course, bishop to b7 by Fischer. Still, we have e5, we have bishop captures on f3, and now knight captures on f3. If you're wondering about queen captures on f3, it's a fun looking move, uh, but if played to perfection, and I'm sure. Uh, theory uh, had this uh, had reached this point at that time uh, you just give up on for nothing because after captures queen, a knight to c6 attacks the queen uh, queen can come to b6 with check and after king to h1 e captures on f4 you grab another pawn bishop captures and now you will play rook to c8 put pressure on the knight once the knight moves you will simply trade but knight captures bishop captures and now you're going to play queen to c6 you're going to offer a queen trade and of course white has to decline because white sacrificed the pawn for uh, the initiative and after bishop e7 next move you're gonna castle you don't have uh, well you really have nothing to show for that sacrificed pawn uh, okay it's a nice bishop on e5 but um, uh, sorry about that uh, bishop uh, Fisher will not um, uh, be, be scared of by this so instead knight captures an f3 uh, it's the best move and now d captures an e5 f captures an e5 and knight to g4 getting ready to pick up the e5 pawn we have queen to e2 and Fisher, uh, of course, plays the strongest move, pawn to b4. He chases away the knight, uh, but uh, uh, Heinz does not go back. Hans marches forward, and uh, what's the idea behind this, the, the hanging e pawn? Uh, well, let's see. Knight g captures on e5, knight, capture, knight captures on e5, knight captures on e5, and now we have knight to g5. Going after uh, the f7 pawn, but also just putting pressure on the knight here. Uh, it's a bit too optimistic. If we just go back one move, bishop to f4 is the move you want to play. And then rook 8 to d1, and uh, okay, now it's uh, it's still a game. For example, knight g6 attacks the bishop, rook a d1 attacks the queen, queen delivers check, bishop blocks check. And uh, now, okay, you put the queen to c6, uh, c7, and the game continues. Uh, uh, it's, a, it, it's an okay position. Uh, but after knight to g5, like I said, maybe a bit too uh, optimistic. We have queen to b6 check. King to h1 and now queen to b5. Fisher said, all right, you're uh, down material. I'm offering a queen trade. Uh, where is this uh, so-called initiative of yours? And now how do you continue? Uh, there is even one game from uh, 2003 where queen captures and b5 was played. But here we have queen to e1. And it is now as of move uh, 18 that this position has never been reached again. So Fisher says, all right, uh, I'm up a pawn. Let's just uh, continue development castle and uh, enjoy our extra pawn. So bishop to e7. Uh, we have b3, now preparing to fianchetto the dark square bishop on this long diagonal, and Fisher castles. We have pawn to a4, attacking the queen, and queen to c5. So putting pressure on the c2 pawn, Heinz defends it, and now rook a to c8. Again, puts pressure on the c2 pawn, and now it's very hard to decide. Something like bishop to b2 is probably 
playable. Rook a2, okay, you can defend, but that will be a sad rook there. Uh, Heinz decides to play active as he was playing active the entire game. He plays pawn to c4, and he says, are you, are you, uh, you know, uh, not not scared of playing b captures on c3 al passant then i play bishop to a3 attack your queen you move the queen i capture the bishop queen caps bishop uh, and i take the knight on e5 so is this playable for fisher fisher calculates well and indeed it is he plays b captures on c3 al passant uh bishop to a3 queen to c7 now bishop captures on e7 queen captures and now queen captures on e5 uh, but fisher saw uh, plenty moves ahead and he knows of course that the rook to c5 reclaims the material and uh, he ends the uh, variation with a passed pawn on c3 we have queen back to e2 and now rook captures on g5 we have queen captures on a6 now heinz also has the two connected passed pawns the a and b pawn but now queen to b4 puts pressure on the pawn here on b3 rook f to b1 and rook to d8 here we have pawn to a5 and fisher uh, has a clean win here with pawn to c2 but he misses it first he prepares it he plays pawn to h6 the only uh he, he's still better of course but it's the only weakish move uh, that he played throughout the entire game uh heinz immediately tries to trade off queens and fisher goes for it maybe keeping the queens uh, can also be played with some like queen to b7 to threaten checkmate but fisher says nope this is enough queen captures b captures and pawn to c2 and here if you don't want to uh, uh, lose the game on the spot, you have to move the rook either to... Okay, you can't play d1. Uh, you have to move the rook either to e1, to f1, or to g1. But not the move that everyone, of course, is looking to play, and that is rook to c1. But this is exactly what Heinz played. Now, feel free to pause the video and win the game for Fisher while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, winning the first round of the uh, Capablanca, fourth Capablanca Memorial Tournament in 1965. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Rook captures on A5. This is the only move that wins. This is the move Fisher played. And after he played it, he was also in this position on move 32 that uh, Heinz uh, Gerhard Lehmann resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. That's the problem with the rook being on c1. Now, if you capture on a5, rook to d1 check. And of course, you're getting checkmated. Rook captures, pawn captures. You bring a queen or a rook into the game. That's it. And if you don't capture on a5, what are you playing? I mean, uh, we're just going to capture on a1 and then play rook to d1. Uh, with check or if you capture you just blunder the whole rook or th there's really nothing th there's no move you can play here yeah. no no move so uh tough luck for for lehman uh fisher did give him a chance to go back into the game but uh, instead of rook to c1 he should have gone rook e1 rook to f1 rook to g1 where it's still fisher who's better fisher is the one who will be pushing for the win there's just no immediate knockout blow uh, like there was here after rook to c1 so you know tough luck for lehman uh, but fisher gets a win in round one he also won round two against smithlov the former world chess champion if you haven't seen it First link in the description below, absolute masterclass of a game. You guys will enjoy it, so do check it out. Uh, and yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. We're going to cover some other games, and not just by Fisher. We're also going to check out some other players, and it uh, seems like a very nice um, uh, tournament to cover, even, uh, you know, in its, uh, in its fullest. Uh, so yeah, once again, really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Federico Torres uh, Velasco, Dan McCormick, James Eugene Cashman, uh, Ankel Musa, and Pedro Baldo for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.